So I think Nathan and I can figure this out. The one thing we thought we got right. There we go. Lock this lock. Spend the whole page on decals, making sure we got those right. There we go. Uh, they didn't send us everything, so we're missing bolts. Um, we've got these pieces here, which are supposed to be on the sides. These are our angle selections, whether we want to carry it at a 15 or a 30 degree angle. No bolts, no pins. Um, so second time I've ordered parts from these people, and I don't get everything, and it doesn't work, or it's the wrong something. So today's dead in the water with this guy. Naturally, it's just another thing, right? Chalk that up on another list. But we brought the hand auger just in case, though just a solo one person. We'll see how far we get with that. And uh, they're supposed to hopefully send a tech guy today. I don't have any hopes really that it's actually gonna happen. So it'll probably be during the week when I'm not here. And you know, they said, hey, you just had to assemble it and put it up and no big deal. Well, this is a 15 page booklet and hose kits and everything else where I've you know, the, <laughs> you know, whatever, just, just put it together and give me the part. That's all I want, right? So anyway, they're going to send it over because I'm missing bolts and I don't know what other parts are missing for the spring and everything else. So we're going to use our hand auger, the you know, gas powered one, which doesn't thrill me. But anyway, we'll go from there. So if you saw the pictures from last week, whenever that was, a couple episodes ago, um, thinking about it, that piece of land that we just cleared out in mulch is a pretty gorgeous piece of spot. And I don't know if I can bear putting just these big fence panels all around it and everything and so forth. So what we decided to do was that's two and a half acres of land we have about a little over a half acre that's behind this 1200 square foot house. Right here. And here's the garage. And right where Owen is standing is the post. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna fill this area in. So today it kind of gave us a revelation here is we have this front auger and it's a beast, man. It's gonna be able to go through a lot. That two and a half acre pasture has a bunch of trees which you just cleared out. And we don't have the bolts, we can't put it assemble together, we can't assemble it, I can't get a tech guy out here. And I don't want to use our one man auger in amongst all the roots, that's just really gonna jack up my elbows. So in the future we're wanting to have a handling facility with a small pen off to the side and then it is always wise sometimes to have a small kind of pasture standalone from the rest. So we're shifting gears here, thinking on the fly, and this area that's right behind the house has no trees. 
and has been cleared out. It's really kind of sandy soil. Since all we have is the one man auger and to make sure we keep going with time, this right here is probably where we're actually gonna throw the handling facility, where we're gonna have the pre-sort, post-sort in the chute. And just to my left or right, your left over there, that's where the basketball court was and some other stuff. That's where the original handling facility was gonna go. Um, so we're gonna make this a pen right now bring the animals into it. They will then be able to go through a gate right there that we've set up with those H posts. So the advantage of putting them here is we can keep them here two weeks and then ship them right through that gate to pasture six, which is already 15 acres or so. And they don't have to stay long-term here. If we put them in the two and a half acres we just cleared, they'd probably be there for three or four months. This spot also has grass, yeah, whatever. It has vegetation. That one over there, no vegetation. Um, so this is going to be their holding pen when they first come here in February. Two weeks later, we're going to ship them out to pasture six. Then we will probably go and convert this to the post sort and pre sort and all those other handling facilities and then build another half acre or so over there and uh, make that where they have a, a joint water and a feed and stuff. And that'll be kind of like a joint between the pastures four and five feed spot. So. Anyway, we're, we're shifting around a little bit. I hope this is making sense. That's what we're doing. That's why we're drilling these posts and why we're not using that auger that I saw on the front of the tractor. Maybe next week, but yeah, keep with us. We'll just fly through this, hopefully. Some of it's really sandy. So we drilled the first post up by the, the garage up there. And generally there's clay that's been showing up whenever we had drilled any of the previous ones. Now this spot is really sandy, but especially on this, which is already sandy here, which is very just loose kind of dirt feeling. We dug the hole, it's 44 inches down. And in this one, no clay showed up. The first one there was clay. This, this is gonna be a pressure containment area and we're gonna have to see if this holds. If, and if these don't hold very well, we'll probably have to pull them out, which probably won't be too hard. Mm -hmm. And uh, fill them with concrete and other things to try and keep them up. But you know, right now we're gonna see how it goes. But I just wanna show you that there's just sand. It's just a bunch of sand. So they're in the ground four feet almost. So there shouldn't be, I mean, that's still a lot of dirt to move sand, but still a lot. We do have a metal tamping rod, which is lost. Um, so this is our tamping stick. You can use anything, it doesn't have to be the metal. The metal will have a bulbous portion on one end, it's the one we have. And then the other has like a flat spade, I think. Anyway, our posts are five, six inch, really about five. And our auger is a six inch auger. So. When you look at that bulbous end, it typically scrapes the outside wall and the stick or the post and it doesn't sink very good. So I found that sometimes a little one by one or whatever you want to call this actually works better because it's inside that gap. Now the main auger that we have, the Dan user, that has a nine inch hole that it drills. So the bulbous part would be fine for that because it'd be more room around the edge. But even then, sometimes your hole isn't perfectly in the right spot and your post has to shift to one side or the other. And again, skinny spots go nice. So I recommend having a stick, it really helps. So if you're over here on a small side and you're not level, trying to go up and down, and you jab into it, what you're really doing is you're pushing this post this direction because this is acting like a lever, like that. So anyway, this is just a case in point. Really skinny on one side, we couldn't use the bulbous, but this side, there's plenty of room where we could use a bulbous end. So 
Keep a bulbous end on a metal one, but also keep a wood for thinner things too, because it's never in the center, it's never. So other things that I found helpful, one, don't step on your fill dirt as you go around. It compacts it and you can't get it, and you're trying to kick it in the ground and it mixes with the grass. So try and walk outside your fill dirt. The second part is, don't put too much in at one time as you go around. You wanna make sure you pack it, and if it gets too thick before you actually pack it, then you can't pack it very well. So take it bit by bit. You know, we try and do a couple, one foot on each side or so, pack it and fill it. So it makes it easier. Sink. Wow, that's sinking a lot, dog. Maybe a little bit more over here, dog. Nope, nope, not on your side, not on your side. My side. and worse than trying to get this dirt out of the grass. Is there bigness? Yeah. Let's get the barbed wire ran between them. Okay, so this is what we're using. It's gaucho wire. It's made by Beckert. We're not sponsored by them, it doesn't matter. But this is high strength barbed wire. So it's not the, the classic barbed wire most people think about. A lot of people use a 12 and a half gauge typical barbed wire. Those have a lot of carbon in them and they stretch a lot. <clears throat> and so you'll stretch it, you'll get it tight, but over time it'll sag and it'll kind of stretch it. So you gotta re-tighten them and there's more maintenance involved with them. As a high strength, high tensile barbed wire, there's not those issues. So there's not a lot of stretch. Once you get it kind of tight, bam, it's done. We're not expecting stretching this wire out a lot. Um, it's just getting it tight. <clears throat> so it's a four point barbed wire, not the two. It's 15 and a half gauge. So it's a smaller wire than the regular 12 and a half gauge, but it actually has more resistance to tearing breaking and so forth. It's about a thousand pounds, I think, tensile strength. So um, it does have, like last time, a picture of the buffalo. So <clears throat> I would prefer actually to use a gaucho wire that's the cattleman version. It's a 14 gauge wire. It's thicker than this stuff. Um, I just don't have any in stock. This is left over when we did pasture six. We have 11 rolls. It's enough to do this. The cattleman is about 30% stronger, and that's what I prefer, especially here. But remember, this is gonna eventually really turn into a holding facility for the pre-sort, post-sort, shoot. Um, and so the barbed wire is probably gonna be replaced a lot by guardrail or something else like that. So I'm not too worried about using this stuff. Ultimately though, in the future, I wanna be using probably the cattlemen's. You just can't find them. Everybody has them saying, hey, we sell them, but they won't have them in stock and you have to order them and pay the shipping to the store just to get it. So they only advertise the, hey, if I had it in the store price, which is, hey, that's a good deal. Oh, but by the way, here's $400 for shipping and you have to buy a pallet at a time, which is like four miles of fence. It's crazy. So anyway, I'm, just, I'm working through that, but we have 11 rolls. We'll probably only need about seven for this. So we're gonna go with this, wrap it around and work on cattlemen's elsewhere, but I wanted to share that with you. So we left ourselves a little bit of room. What we're doing is we're setting this bottom line between the corners, and this barbed wire is gonna be that line where all other posts are built off of. Once we get this strapped, we're gonna go along and we're gonna mark about every eight feet and put a mark, and then we're gonna come back, either put T post and or wood post all along that run. 
So right now, we left ourselves a little bit long, and we're going to wrap it about the same height that it was over here. One of the advantages of using this pasture partially is that we can share this fence with what was already done. So it saves us even that much more work right now. Um, we'll come back as it builds out into that whole pen situation and modify, but at least now it works well. And this is the gate, by the way. I didn't say that, but this is the one H brace, H brace on the far side, and the gate would actually be here. The people who built the fence didn't leave the hole here for the gate. They just, in amongst all their crap work, just went all the way down. My wife is smirking on the other side of the camera. Yeah, how'd that work out for you? That hurt. Yep, that hurts. I'm not expecting this to be super taut. Oh, don't jab that right in your artery. We left enough length that after we get everything posted out and the age brace is sorted, then we'll come back, unwind this, and then we'll really tighten it down and do it right. So we'll put some staples, we'll do all the other stuff. Right now, we've got ourselves a really straight line. And we're gonna work off that and then come back and fix in the future. We've got this side lined out, we got it dotted. Now it's time to start digging and doing all of our post work. So that's happening. In the meantime, the kids are gonna get these other lines going and sorted out, marked out. All right, Owen and Nathan are running more lines. And now you can see um, where the holes are that Jeff has already dug. Boop, boop, boop. And they're working on that guy. Help get these posts in. done with their break and Sandra asked daddy how to start the um, blower so here she is helping clean off some of the stuff off the asphalt with the blower. Okay so here's where the pine tree lay dead and its remnants still clutter the earth. So little Lorna filling up her orange bucket with pine cones. Yay! And Tiffany. I think Lorna should train me buckets though. <laughs> Oh, that's funny. You're a big girl, you get a big bucket. Aww. You gonna haul that over, Lorna? Yep. All right. So who has the better job, Sandra or Bree? Well, it depends on what your better job is. I don't know, so what do you think? Who has the better job? You'd rather we do what Sandra's doing? No, it's noisy over there. <laughs> I like to quiet. likes the quiet. I think that's pretty funny because she talked for like 17 hours straight on a car trip once. So for her telling me she likes the quiet, I think we got that on camera. <laughs> she wants to be the extra noise, okay? That's competition. Exactly. That's exactly what that meant. You have a pine cone craft and you need pine cones. Five cents a piece. Hey, hey, this sounds like a thing we should do for our, our sister station. <laughs> Oh, true, right? All right, we've got our load. Time to go. Well, it's looking good over here. Shovels and rakes work. Imagine that. Cool. I know, so much faster than sitting on your butt. Ah, psh, whatever. Two sleds. Hee ho. Mush, mush. That's right, mush. I had a chance to talk to Luke, our uh, mechanic dude who came out and looked at stuff. Um, 
I bought the the Dan user from one set of John Deere folks and he's with the people I bought the tractor set of John Deere folks anyway so he came out and looked at it he's also replacing that third function diverter he's actually putting it now to a third function valve it's going to be great anyway so he looked at it some and he, he's kind of just baffled about why they didn't send us hardware but I'm hoping this week sometime we can get the hardware done and then the third function actually will be put in maybe in a couple weeks but he's gonna do it upright so it's gonna look good yeah. we spray paint through the white dots and it's supposed to maybe snow this weekend so <laughs> We decided to unload the rest of the boards that we had and we placed them on the dots and tipped them over. We'll come back and it'll be right about that. We'll kind of verify it a little bit, but we lined them out eight feet apart and uh, I'm hoping the white dots stay. We'll see. So today we got some progress. We got some posts in and we've run some line. It's not as much as we wanted when we first got here. We left a little earlier today. We're all stoked, but it, you know, two to three hours was spent with this thing that doesn't work. So anyway, we've got some good progress. So we'll catch you next time. We appreciate you joining. Just do hit that subscribe button and like it, you know, gives us a little smile and then we'll talk to you next time. Thanks.